Hi, Maya. Hi, Maureen. How are you? Fantastic. Thanks for joining us. That's a pleasure. I, I didn't realise I'm. I, I was. I was. Am I? Am I ready to go now? Oh, it's a bit later, isn't it? Is, Oh, no, look, I think we're right on time. I yeah. think Maya was just doing all the introductions of what's been yeah, happening, fantastic. the updates, and so I reckon she's almost ready to, to go into into the session with you. We might oh, fantastic. Start. All right, I'll get, uh, I'll get comfortable outside. I'll set up a, a little position out there and uh, I'll, uh, I'll be ready to go. I've made okay. myself a cup of tea, so all's well. Fantastic. We're, we're sitting here um, at Southwest Rocks. So if you hear lots of nature noises behind us, that's... <laughs> that's oh, what... I love Southwest Rocks. Uh, I know. It's, yep. We're on a, uh, trying to get our way to uh, Gippsland Lakes. But um, we're... Hope you're, are you keeping safe with all the stuff that's going on in Sydney, Costa? Well, I'm, a, I'm actually in Melbourne. Oh, that's right. You are in Melbourne. Mm. All right. So I, you're, yeah. you're all right then. I Melbourne for... Um, to catch up with our production team for the first time in uh, since March and uh, and have a, a, a final meeting and and a, well, a final and a first meeting and then and then uh, uh, a little bit of a gathering just to to uh, to put a bow on the year and and uh, yeah that that was that was it on uh, on Wednesday and Thursday and then yesterday was our final show for the year so I had a whole lot of um, publicity to do around that and and yeah here we are sort of in the first day first day of the break and uh what a what a great thing to uh to be able to be involved with thanks maya well thank you for joining us all i know it's been a crazy time of year for you so i'm glad you could you could um you could be here with us i'm just going to fiddle around with the technology to make you on a spotlight with maya as well just as we go into um into this next section yeah excellent all i right. might slightly more yeah. garden-esque background <laughs> So I'm just going to begin by introducing Costa um, for those who might not have heard of him and his amazing feats that he's done. So most people know him as the um, one of the most popular TV celebrities. Um, he's the host of ABC's Gardening Australia. Um, he's also part of Dirt Girl World, uh, which is a kids show here in Australia. And um, a permaculture kids show, nonetheless. Yeah. I mean, how amazing is that? <laughs> <laughs> I remember watching it many times when I was a kid. But um, he's also a, a compost ambassador, a permaculture ambassador, and he's passionate in schools and um, community gardens and uh, coming and joining us. So thank you for joining us today. Um, and welcome back. You've joined us once before, actually. Um, oh, and it's a pleasure. Yeah, so we've got people from around the world today. Um, we've got people from... Uh, we've got Tom joining from Uganda, and it's the middle of the night for him. And I think we've got some people joining from Asia and a few people joining from Australia. And, and United Americas States. As yeah. Well. yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. Um, I'm going to start with the questions now. Also, if anyone has any questions they'd like to ask Costa, we've got heaps of time for questions afterwards. So if you'd like to put them in the chat or save them for afterwards, because I probably won't be able to see them until after. I'll try and keep an eye yeah. on it too. <laughs> yeah. So I'd like to start off by asking you, how do you describe permaculture and why do you think young people should be getting involved with it? Great opening question, Maya. That, 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 that's a ripper. Um, I, I suppose I'd, I'd describe permaculture as a way of looking at life as a whole. Um, I'd contain that by saying, you know, by, by direct definition of the words, you know, maintaining a permanent culture involves so many layers. It's not just, it's not just the actual physical activity of what is a culture, you know, what is a human settlement? Like, why do people come together as a community? I mean, we come together as a community to look after ourselves, to, to look after who we have around us, but also to leave a place in a better way than it was so that the benefits that we've had of enjoying the natural wonders of the world should not cease because we've been greedy and we've we've felt entitled and that this is all for us and 
and I'm not worried about anything else. And 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 that 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 takes you into the cultural side of perspective and 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 how you look at culture is how you look at at your outlook on on why you're here. So that that becomes a little bit spiritual as well, in in the sense that you need to to think about not just um, um, privileges, the you know the privilege of being alive, but also the obligations and duties. And and I think permaculture encapsulates those obligations and duties of us as individuals and what we must do to look after ourselves, but what we also must do to look after the, the world we need to survive, but then also the world as an entire operating system. And so then you start to look at design and say, well, what things am I doing that are having positive and negative impacts? And is that a, a, a result of design? Is that a, a result of my way of not just seeing the world, but acting in the world? So it's, it's, it's this wonderful lens that permaculture is because it has this fantastic capacity to look at the big picture of us as a culture and as a, wor as a, as a worldwide community. But then it can zero right down and look and say to you, what is your footprint? What are your daily habits? How are they leaving a legacy? And what is that legacy? Is that legacy landfill? Is that legacy single-use plastic? Is that legacy clearing of forests and fracking of the land? Or is that a, a regenerative legacy? And is that a connection to the, the First Nations people and how they have survived for so long, yet this industrial world then, that we're living in, in, in 200 years, we've done you know immeasurable damage so so th this this capacity to shift your lens i think that that to me is the most exciting thing about permaculture because it stimulates the broad but it also gives you those very tools that 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 solutions based action action focused approach which i already know that you know in your case you're you're doing that i mean just perma youth itself encapsulates all of this because it's bringing the big picture of all of the people that are here watching i mean i think it's incredible that we can use this technology to do the big picture but then at the same time you are sharing solutions for me to see and for someone in the us to see and someone in in africa to see and someone in europe to see so that 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 you know your 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 perma youth captures everything about permaculture from that 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 moving lens and and at any one point we can we can we can shift that lens and and really really share share that ability of the lens to to um to expand and contract yeah i love that i love the idea of the lens that's i think zooming that's, in and then zooming back yeah. out again yeah and i suppose you know, and and when I'm when I'm, uh, you know, in in my get grubby mode. Well, it's not a mode, and that's that's why, you know, thinking about my role on uh, get grubby TV and Durka World, when when we set that up, um, and that, and we said, well, who are you? And I said, well, I'm Costa, you know, Costa the Garden Gnome, so that it's still me. I, I didn't want to be some character because that was useless. Because then when people see me, they know that I have the same goggles on. So as an adult, when I have my permaculture goggles on, when I have my nature goggles on, they're the same thing. So whether I've got my red garden gnomes hat on or not, children bump into me in the street and they go, Costa, <laughs> lovely. To, you know, they're not saying, oh, is that George the gnome? And, and, and then they're confused. So, so yeah, and, and the goggles are the biggest thing. That, and, and I use that analogy because for me, it's not an analogy those goggles are on all the time and, and I'm, I'm constantly looking and there is that adjustment there <laughs> that blows it out to big picture but then brings it into the joy of looking at an eggshell and understanding that, how, well, how valuable that, it is. Yeah, that is, I mean, the first principle of permaculture, that observe and interact. And, you know, unless we, unless we do that, 
we're kind of missing the most important part of everything and we can't design well we can't design healthy sustainable human habitats if we don't have that lens on and i think it's critical it's, it's one of the most important things and and i i feel like in in all the things that i i do um we can we can look everyone's looking i mean everyone's constantly looking around but there's a big difference for me between looking and seeing uh, and uh, yep. and when when we actually look and see when we actually listen but hear uh, uh, many people can listen to a conversation but they don't hear what that person's saying um they hear what they want to hear and 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 that that i think you know particularly for you and and everyone involved in perma youth um that's the key because when you actually hear what someone's saying then your capacity to communicate with them it, it takes on a new level because the understanding you break through that wall of 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 divide and then if i hear what you're saying it, it, by by really by really listening and 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 he hearing the intent and hearing hearing exactly where it's coming from where's it coming from the heart where's it coming from the mind you know what's the science what's the what's the the, the kind of social motivation all the all these things are taking place and 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 the skills you're all developing by communicating together you, you you're building up this capacity to to clearly hear what someone's saying and then you get things done because there won't be this kind of like i said you said you thought i thought we did this and it was all wrong it's like okay what do you want not what do you need from my perspective and then and then we start to break down that whole entitlement thing that you know i'm telling you what to do because because you know i'm saving the world you know and when we when we can let go of that 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 sort of you know don't you don't you know that i'm 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 doing this for good. Lots of good things fall into the trash because people aren't actually listening and finding the timing because for me it's all about the timing and sometimes you may have to go around the block on something and rather than think, oh, we were, we were stopped, no, just think you were detoured to come back and come in on a better runway and 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 land at at a time where then the lights will be green in front of you and 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 you'll move through to the next stages without constantly hitting hitting all these walls and then feeling like you're a victim you, you know like oh they don't want it and they're not listening and they're this what what i look at it and i say well if it didn't work what was wrong with my delivery what was wrong with my timing how can i assess it and 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 then we come into that whole space of success and failure and and not thinking that oh that failed no it didn't fail it required a little bit of tuning its timing was a little bit out so let's mm. let's recalibrate and fly as 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 we can and 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 if we're flying with timing then it will really it will really have that domino effect and clear the pathway for you. Yeah, that makes so much sense, doesn't it? It's all about the, the patterns of connection and the richness of the relationships. And yeah. that even if you do make a mistake and something doesn't work, that it's a learning experience as well. And that's great. And I, and I think, you know, you know, one thing that's happened, and and you know, you all of you in Perma Youth, you, you you've got this incredible tool of togetherness, and and when when you can do things and you're doing it here in new south wales in australia and someone's doing it in tanzania and and what are their challenges and and they through their lens suddenly see and have a challenge that you never saw because you were coming at it differently and then you go well actually i can improve my model now and so it, it becomes this modular thing where you say this isn't it like there, there's no destination of the holy grail like we have solved the problems and excuse me 
don't you know who you think we are? Look at us. No, it's like this is solving a solution in 2020 on the 19th of December or for this season or, or whatever. But then how are you going to take that to the next level? And how are the people in the US going to apply it in their context? And and when you can bash it around and, and, and you know, I, I think one of the biggest things particularly in the space where, where you're working, all of you listening as youth and as humans and as adults, as young adults, um, you know, that, that capacity to be uh, and feel strongly about something with the heart but not hang yourself up. We have to, we have to be open to assessment and particularly now more than ever with the way that conversations occur. People come out and want to attack. And I think the most important thing, particularly for you, and I see it in anyone working in environment and conversa conservation and so on, you've got to be really careful not to put yourself up there because it's not you that's due for criticism. It's the issue. And we can... We can we can pull up an issue apart. We can swing at it like a piñata and knock the stuffing out of it, right? But it's not you. And, and I think that's really important. And that does not mean that you can't have heart and mongrel and, and, and drive and, and, and passion and perseverance. But no one has a right to bash you up. And if you build that, if, if you maintain that separation, then it doesn't matter what anyone says about the issue. And they, they can can it, they can they can attack it, they but that, that's fine. And then you might say, all right, well, that one's not quite right for the picking. Let's take this and put this one up for 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 action. And 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 that way you're not you're not feeling like there, there's there's a real start and finish use by date of this challenge. You go, no, in our environment, because it might it might be totally acceptable over in, 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 in Austria at the moment because the, the climate is right and people are ready for it. But in, in central Queensland, they're not ready. Or in, in, in you know, central, central Midwest USA, they're not ready. So what that means is we have to take it away, think about it in a new light, shift it, put it up on the hoist, give it a kick, give it a little, little <laughs> respray, and, and then and then away we go again and we drive off in that vehicle and we, we see how it goes. So I, I think that, you know, probably one of the most important things that I've seen and learned in the journey is to protect protect your heart and your person and, and not hang yourself on. Otherwise, you end up with what I've seen a lot of is people burning out. Mm. And and that's that's a real shame because... If they burn out, then we lose them forever. So we we, we really and I, and I think that's the best the best uh, element of perma youth in the sense that as a as a as a gathered group you can share those skills of of um, of understanding those lines of where uh, where is my my connection to this, but where is the issues freestanding for me to 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 be able to put the boot into it or to promote it and celebrate it as much as as much as that the spectrum allows you know because we were, we were that, talking the other day Costa about um in another group actually wearing a cloak of resilience and I think that's a kind of a nice thing <laughs> that we go out there that and and having together that um yeah like you're saying this group together having an amazing resilience together uh, to be able to support one another and not feel like they're alone wherever they are in the world, that there is a sense of, of togetherness and mutual learning. But anyway, I know that Maya has more questions, so I'll stop speaking, sorry. I just love catching up with you, Costa. It's just not enough. <laughs> yeah, so the next question I wanted to ask you, like with all these different aspects of permaculture from like the social side to the environmental side, uh, what future would you like to see in the future? Like say 50 years of you walking down the street what what would you like to see happening? Oh, wow! What a what a 
big, broad, open-ended, free-ranging question is that. Speaking of free-ranging, I'd love to see chickens free-ranging there, of course. <laughs> um, I, I suppose I'd, lo I'd love to see, if I was walking down the street, I'd love to see a situation where, you know, the streets, the streets were just these, these green canopied. In our street. That, yeah, yeah, literally our street. <laughs> exactly. That's a great reference to for for all of you listening to build on. But but a, a, a wonderful situation where you know the streets were were um, designed and retrofitted. Let's say in a way that canopy was incorporated people were growing collectively and local food systems were as local as the street and people were exchanging uh, the houses captured water captured sunlight captured generational um, riches by having the elders at home um, still living at home on on gardening australia last night i had the absolute privilege, Mayor, of meeting a lady and I got a message from her, carer, saying, Costa, I know you're busy, but is there any chance you could send a message to one of your biggest fans for her 100th birthday? And I was like, what? Did you say 100? And then I just said, forget a message. What's your phone number? I'll video call. And then I started video calling. Phyllis, of course, you know, with 100 years ago, the name Phyllis, how good is that? You know, I don't know any Phyllises more contemporarily, but, but there's Phyllis. Her name is 100 years old as well. And she, I then went and visited her. Then I spoke to the researchers for the show and we said, we've got to do a story on her. And then I went and we did this story where I, I helped, you know, remove any hazards around her garden, trips and steps and all these things. There she is at 100 years old. She moved into that house as a 30-year-old in 1950. Now, you're reading about the history of 1950. She's living. She, she moved in in 1950. So work out the maths. 70 years in that house. And she accredits the activity, the gardening. And I think what a joy to have. We, we need our elders to be around our youth so that all of that knowledge... I spoke to her on the phone last night after the show. I rang at about 9.30 and she was in sort of like the post show. She said, oh, we've received so many messages, some messages from people I don't even know. Um, and, and, and she was so excited. But I just think, you know, we, we can't have our elders living at, you know, you don't want our elders separated and, and living alone. Like, you know, so I'd, I'd see houses that are retrofitted in a way that, we can have multi-generations living in, in our neighbourhoods and sharing those skills and, and all of the, 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 the technological aspects of capturing light, capturing water, capturing and using microclimates to, to harvest everything from, from sunlight and water and produce but to, to flowers and, and, and um food for pollinators so that then we, we bring the birds back in and then we bring the insects and, and, and we regenerate ecosystems in a way that we do it locally. And, and I think, as David has said in his book, you know, the place that I, I, I see that in 50 years, some of the richest landscapes can be our cities. They, they can become these ecological hubs because particularly, you know, when you think about after the bushfires that we've had, where is the wildlife coming to? Where are the insects and birds coming to? They're coming back to the city. And so when we can turn these into biodiversity corridors, but that biodiversity goes out to the human side, to the cultural side, so that we then build this permanent cultural settlements that are growing and regenerating, not depreciating and degenerating, um, I see really big hope. I, I, I am excited about this. I, I think, you know, the challenges you have. I just read an article where, you know, out of the blue, someone says in Queensland, we need to irradiate. We need to, to, to irradiate all the food because that way we, we will control fruit fly. And you say, that's just one person's decision. And if that's allowed to pass through the night, 
and and this is appropriate to everyone listening because these same decisions are made by individuals within an organization and when they said that they were going to do that to seeds earlier this year there was such a massive outrage that they said no no we'll only do it to seeds coming from areas of the US and areas of the world where they have these particular diseases otherwise that would have wiped out the whole organic industry and then now they want to say let's irradiate all food to get rid of the fruit fly but i say maya and all you young science geeks out there fix the fruit fly work it out how can we deal with this because that's your next role as a generation there's there's scientific minds out there that are like okay let's solve it not just nuke it it, like, oh, just nuke it because that's the simplest way. So, so you know, I, I, think, I think that, you know, in 50 years' time, the capacity to have cities that are these biodiverse, cultural, scientific um, landscapes that are also human settlements and home and artistic, creative hubs where people are playing music and eating, eating fresh local food and... and, and and expressing that through art and 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 culture, oh, it's that that it, that makes me excited. On the subject of fruit flies, um, we have someone who's in the call at the moment who did a YouTube video on making fruit fly traps. So, uh, Damon, yeah, so young yeah. Damon, yeah, awesome, Damon. We'll have to share that one around again. Make sure everyone gets to see that. And I'm sorry, we've got a bit of a there's some beach equipment that's arrived doing some drilling over here so i hope that's not affecting our sound <laughs> no, no, sound it. Right to me. <laughs> oh, that's an amazing vision costa um i have another question and um so costa you've got an amazing media presence you know with the tv shows gardening australia dirt go world um radio magazines um and you know talking to young people around the country and showing showing everyone their gardens um, which is fantastic. And um, you also share what we see as a permaculture kind of way of gardening and living, even though it's not directly labelled as permaculture. Um, and so as permeath, we'd love to amplify um, our voices and reach more people. And so what would you advise us to do to kind of increase our media presence? Because we'd really love to share kind of um, our vision to as many people as possible. Yeah, great, great, um, great ask there, Maya. Um, I sort of again go back into that that lens mode where you can pull back to big picture options, but then you also zero in and be the amplifier by what you do, because I think one of the most powerful things in terms of absorption of who you are and what your message is is when people see you just doing and, and when when they see that you don't have to say anything you don't have to stand on a box and say hey hey this is important this is it's like no have a tomato oh here's some corn and i i spend I spend a lot of time thinking, how can I reverse the narrative rather than me telling to people asking? Because when someone asks you a question, then the whole context shifts because then you can be as crazy mongrel excited and not seem like a fruitcake who's just trying to sell this thing and coming down at me like you're walking through the street and someone's saying, oh, can you sign this? Can you do this? Can you do that? And, 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 and everyone's got so much going on. There's all this squelch coming into their, their, their radio system and their, 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 their Wi-Fi and they're going, oh, there's another notification and there's another business. And they're like, oh, I just, no, excuse me. As opposed to when you are just doing and when someone comes to you and says, oh, what's this? What are you up to? then the question changes and it becomes well since you asked suddenly de-armed you're no longer you're no longer someone trying to um encourage or change something you're actually someone flourishing in your space and, and so i suppose I, i'd 
I'd, I'd answer that question by saying, think about ways that you can quietly shift opportunity for people to ask questions rather than you give um, directions. And that can even be said for when you're talking to people because when, when you get them asking questions, they're kind of giving the answers to what you would have to tell. And so instead of it being, oh, well, if you, if you understood permaculture and principle number seven, as opposed to someone saying, so what you're saying is, is you know, small and simple solutions. And then you go, yeah, that's right, because small and simple solutions do this. And then, and, and, and that, so what, I, what, I, what I'm getting at here is whether that's a news reporter, whether that's a podcaster asking a question, but what, you, what we can all do every day is have the general public, the family, our family members, the neighbour over the street, when they're asking us questions, we are being the most powerful amplifiers because they then take that message and do the work for you. So in a sense, it becomes what we all call viral. You know, think about it like, like this COVID tracing. You know, one person goes into an area, gets the, the, the disease, and then they go out here and see 100 people. And then those 100 people take it out and find another 1,000 people, and then those 1,000 reach it to 10,000. So, so that's where when, when, our, when our take on 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 promotion is rebadged and so instead of about promoting and pushing and forcing when it's actually this is just me and and this is what i love and then finding it appropriate to the context of oh this podcast is talking about this and probably the most important thing when i talk about you know media and publicity is you can't get everything across in one interview and don't try to because that's when you sound like the desperate salesman. Listen to the conversation. Listen to the question and give an answer and then generate conversation because anyone, whether they're a podcast, whether they're the, the 7 o'clock news, whether they're a, a, a blog, whether they're a, an Instagram live or a Facebook live or, or a newspaper or whatever, you've got to remember that they're feeding an audience and they want – entertainment like they don't want to be told they don't want a, a desperate sort of person trying to tell them everything about permaculture in a five minute show and and what what's better is when you just give morsels morsels that are a bit like we go and film a story with gardening australia sometimes for two days filming and it gets crunched down to six minutes and when i first started i was like Oh, where's the bit where Myra and I were walking and, and we talked about, uh, yeah, well, it was too long and it didn't fit. And well, where, what about when Morag swung on a, on a high line and came flying through and, and, and went over the top of the trees and landed? Yeah, but it, 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 the light was not right and it, we, we couldn't fit it in. But what goes, what, what comes through in that six minutes is enough to make people hungry. So if you can, if you can, make sure that when you are promoting when you're telling a story tell the story from here you know and don't overfill your stories and don't overload people because you know like anyone else you guys are bombarded with info everyone's bombarded with info so you want to just give them a like i i, I was watching a documentary a david attenborough documentary the other day and you know you know the one thing that i got out of it i could have stopped it and watched it later was he was talking about snails because this was all about the power of egg, right? So he's talking about the, 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 the joys of just the egg. And he said, you know, he said, little birds, they eat snails' shells because that gives them the calcium to build their shells and, and lay eggs and make more birds. Yet people put pellets out to kill snails. And then they, they say, oh, there's no little birds around anymore. Well, the little birds don't have shell to lay an egg to propagate. So, and multiply. So, you know, it's about, I think the most important thing about y your approach to media is find the morsels, find interesting things 
and and dish them up as nice snacks. There's times where you do a longer piece. There's times, but, but think about your capacity, whether it's your social media and what you post. You don't have to tell a massive story. Just give people think, oh, gee, that's interesting. And then maybe one link, you know, or maybe oh, I was reading this. And then people, and then let them come back at you and say, well, what was that book you said you were reading? You know, there's ways we can treat media different to someone standing on a megaphone driving through the suburbs saying, we have the solutions and we're doing it now. And then people just run up their driveway and <laughs> just hide behind the curtains and say, ah, oh, this fruitcake's coming at us again, you know. Oh, it's so true. It's so true. I can't remember how many times when I was a teenager and I was yelling about save the forest and stop nuclear power and this. And I remember like watching actually as some of the people I knew start to walk to the other side of the street when they saw me coming. <laughs> <laughs> and, and, yes. and it's interesting because <laughs> it's not to say that there's not a place for that. And, you know, there is a valid place for, for protest and, and, and don't do, please don't compare those two things because, you know, the protests, the school, the school marches, the, 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 um, the, the, you know, the, I've been involved with the Tasmanian Youth Climate Leaders Summits and things like that. These are very, very important because we need that. And again, that's that lens, you know, at this level, but then at that level, we need that. So just always remember where you are on the lens spectrum to determine the style of, of message you push out at that time. Yeah, that's such great advice. Thanks, Costa. There's so much. I think I think what we might do for the Perma Youth is actually take out that little section of advice then and then unpack it a bit because there's lots of different, like they have a YouTube, they're writing a book, they've got social media, they've got these events and face-to-face -face clubs. And actually one of the really interesting things that's happening in terms of amplifying this at the moment, there's a number of people on this call. There are, um, there's a new group that's just started in the north of um, Uganda. There's a woman here oh. who's starting groups in um, in America. Annette from Texas. Hi, Annette. How are you? Hello. Um, and then there's we've there's groups from Malaysia who we've been um, linking with, and um, there's there's hubs forming all over. So if anyone has a sm even a small group of people, it's about localizing these ideas, and then yeah. coming back and connecting. Um, weekly, we have these weekly global meetings, and then monthly where we have a chance to speak with people like yourself to really kind of, you know, have this intergenerational and cross-cultural conversations. And so there's layers. There's, there's like from yeah. the local to this, this global event that we do monthly rather than having one big annual event. We decided just to have, you know, regular monthly events so we can touch base regularly and, and talk to so many, you know, inspiring people. And uh, so that's kind of a, that's been how it's and we didn't plan that either, did no. we, Perma Youth? You know, <laughs> this is decision. this is just what's emerged by right. listening and really hearing to what people are asking for. And it's been an exciting journey this last year, hasn't it? Yeah. Yeah. It's fantastic. And and I mean allowing it to be loose enough to say, okay, this is this is working for now. And this doesn't have to go on forever. You know, it can it can morph in from the chrysalis into the butterfly and start to fly in different ways. Yeah, and, right. and, and, and we don't, we don't need to be sort of straight jacketed because what you're doing now is what's needed now. It, and it's been needed because of the circumstances of this year. And, but it's also been generated and, and given momentum by the fact that everyone has been online a lot. So what a, what a chance to be able to, to, to break down those distances and, and do this. And I, and I think, that, that capacity not to get precious about what's appropriate for a given period of time because things do grow up and they flower and then they form a space for the new insects to come in and, and, and hatch on the flower heads and then on the seed pods and then on the dead plant and then it falls down and it feeds the soil which has the seeds that were up there. So, and you know, what comes up in two years time or however long this goes and 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 that's where i say you know sometimes you know a garden or a, a project may get to a point where it ends and i say don't mourn that celebrate it mm -hmm. and and allow yourself the freedom to to look to the next bit because that's how life works and you know i i, I saw we had a wonderful story on the show last night where 
a lady was looking out a window in COVID and suddenly she saw, she saw her very neighbourhood differently because she looked down at the road and said, there's a traffic island, uh, uh, like a roundabout, sort of a, well, it wasn't quite a roundabout because it was actually uh, an oblong about. <laughs> Was, was sort of a, a, a rhombus about because it wasn't it wasn't roundabout but the cars come around it like that because it's the end of the street and she thought i'm going to start gardening on there and she started gardening on there and what did it do other people are looking out the window and they're going what's she up to <laughs> people walking past with their dog and going hey that's the first time they look past and they might go oh what's she up to you know and then the second time they walk past and go oh Wow, are they sunflowers coming up? And then the third time, they go, oh, it's looking fantastic. You know, can I help? And 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 that's whether it's a massive project like what Greta, what Greta, Greta did and, and, and created the, the, the climate strikes or whether it's, you know, like the Youth Climate Coalition who are uh, making the action space for people to do something, don't underestimate those first steps by one individual because that goggle that goggle time where you just go oh hang on ah oh, oh, that's a space of land there that i've never seen before but i only saw it because i stopped and 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 i stopped because we were kind of locked down and 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 i think we can lock down our thoughts quickly at any time just by stepping back and going for a walk and and letting nature talk to us yeah lisa wrote in the chat before that um what's happening is it's like they're becoming ripple makers and things like that are ripple makers oh, like great, creating great. ripples of positive change i think that's a lovely term ripple and makers as well. oh and the myceliating mushrooms yeah i think that's oh, like yeah. there's all this underground stuff going on and then these little mushrooms pop up and you know they seem like they're disparate but they're actually part of this beautiful web that's going on of life underneath and that's yeah and even though they will like kind of they're ephemeral and stuff and they'll fall over they like release spores before they die and then it creates its own and you know know where they're going to land they'll land wherever they want to land you can't plan it <laughs> yeah and, and what's interesting is and, and this i mean I'll, I'll get a bit sort of out there now but you know i i sort of i, I always talk to people about the idea that that composting and whether that's nature composting a tree through mycelium and fungi but it's the only activity that we can ever do where we turn death into life and when you think like that and you say well that tree fell down and it cleared light to allow the seedlings but when when it, when it squashed some of the seedlings, only a few trees will grow up, but they will draw off that trunk to grow from that, 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 that passing. And, and, and when we can become, when, when, when we let go of that fear around death and, and understand that, that, that we are agents of life during our life and, and we, can, we can help help nature do what it does, which is constantly turn death into life in this thin layer on this planet, this rock spinning in the middle of, <laughs> of, a, of, a, of a place that, that, you know, I'm not even going to try and explain <laughs> because I don't know. But anyway, we're spinning around very fast, but but all the life. When I, when I was in the uh, Tarkine wilderness in Tasmania, and this massive tree had fallen. It was covered in fungi. And we were walking through this forest. And there was this, it was like you're in a gymnasium with a sprung floor. And it was like all of this life was just, it was almost breathing, exhaling. And as you walked, you could hear the air being pushed out. And then it would breathe, smell this earth. Mm. It, it was unbelievable. But this tree, when you stood on it and looked at it, side but on on its side where it had fallen down the roots that this was a tree that was 90 meters tall or 70 meters tall that had fallen its root ball was only about two and a half meters wide because it's living in this layer you know and and when you think like that you just say yes that is the layer of life and and how we walk on that layer how we how we how we propagate that layer how our actions support and grow that layer 
that's really everything that, that, that you're doing through your actions. And, you know, if you trace the source, you know, literally the, 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 the upwaters of your creek as permeate you back to that life-giving life giving status quo, then, wow, you know, everything you're doing is important. Every meeting, every monthly meeting, because, because you, you, you're sharing um, systems, ideas and, and ways that, that, you know, one person or a collective can, can amplify way beyond, you know, one set of lungs. <laughs> We've probably got time for about three questions. So sure. three quick questions. So anyone got any questions to put in the chat? Um, or, or to speak out? Oh, yeah, to speak. Um, um, there was something from before, and it was um, Ramya um, uh, Shivkuma. Yeah, and he, uh, yeah, he asked, uh, what's your legacy? When you were talking about legacy, oh no, I think you, I think he was saying, "What's your legacy?" That's powerful. Oh, that, yeah, yeah. yeah. So yeah, that was okay. more of a comment saying, "That's right. a great question to ask. What What is the legacy that you're leaving, and how you're going to act?" Yeah, yeah, yeah. And Eden's yeah. just, oh sorry, but yeah, you go. Yeah, that's, yeah, that that is that that is a, a really interesting thing, and and I think you know as as a generation coming into coming into that phase of of, of growth like a plant each and every each and every one of you have this chance to think about your legacy but 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 your it's, it's about legacy it's, it's, it's about building you, you know and legacy takes care of itself through your actions um sometimes if you get too too focused on on an end it, it, it reminds me of this wonderful quote, it's better to travel well than to arrive. Um, it is, you know, for want of a, of a better uh, term, you know, it is about your path and, and it is about what you do along the way. And the legacy side of it, it comes because of what you do, not because you're focusing on a legacy. <laughs> you know, it's kind of like looking at it uh, like you, you, you can set those things up and draw on other people's legacies but I reckon the biggest opportunity for all of you is to get out there and do it. Um, Eden's asked, um, what's your favourite plant and why? <laughs> I'll pick my favourite child. <laughs> <laughs> He's Eden. You got me on the spot. I suppose, I suppose I could break it down into categories, you know, because, yeah. you know, I could talk about... I could talk about, you know, the wild, the wild side of things. And, and, you know, it takes me back actually to what you asked earlier, Maya, about just what that vision was. And, and I suppose the most powerful element of that vision that I'm just seeing and, and wanting to get more of, and I know I touched on a little bit, is that rewilding, you know, our capacity to rewild, to, to, to help nature reestablish its ways, not our manicured ways, but a rewilding where we we understand and provide that opportunity so you know in wild places it's almost a combination of plants that work together across the season across the year and so you know to pick to pick one specifically well look i'm looking at a lemon tree at the moment and you know as a greek australian you know lemons are a big part of our culture so i i like to think the more we can we can hang both sides of it you know the culture of nature and the culture of humans you know so we can grow stuff for habitat and rewilding and then we can grow the cultural elements that how lemons are used are they preserved and pickled for one style of of southeast asian cuisine or are they used on 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 your salads or turned into juice and you know that that side of it and then other people you know do stuff with the leaves and so so yeah i'll, I'll, I'll say a lemon at the moment although i'm eating a lot of mangoes and I love <laughs> I love that idea of the multiple descriptions of things. That's kind of yeah. very Nora Bates in you. Yeah. Um, I, I like this question, Maya. I think yeah, yeah. we should get to this so one. So Sebastian and Maggie asked, how do you, how to not get mentally heavy or sad when looking fully at the problems our Earth faces or how to handle the pressure of the problems in progress? Oh, geez. <laughs> Mag Maggie and Seb, you, you, you nailed it. You, you've absolutely hit the nail on the head in terms of, 
that is that is front and center and and it's a really big thing and it goes back a little to what i was saying about the 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 the, the protection of of heart and 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 when i say protection of heart i'm not saying isolation and oh i can't see it i can't see it i can't see it so it doesn't exist no what what i'm saying is overwhelm overwhelm is a tool that people use to knock people off the scent that it, 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 if we can overwhelm you then as a generation uh, the another generation can just take advantage yeah. and and keep keep you subdued so once you feel overwhelmed and out of the equation then you've been sterilized effectively you, you've been you've been cornered so yes after the bushfires was i overwhelmed i was devastated to think about how many animals and how much habitat was lost but I also look at the fact that nature has an inbuilt resilience. Yes, Costa, but those fires were so intense that, um, you know, some things will never come back. That's correct. But I can't carry that baggage. I didn't, I, that the, the fires have happened. What I need to do is say, okay, I feel that. I respect that. I understand it. And we're going to move on and find solutions. So I think it's really important to remember that if you allow, so you have to build a little bit of mental, a, a little bit of a mental um, routine where take it on, acknowledge it, and then place it in a spot where you say, that's safe there. I can come in and out of it, but it's not sitting on my shoulders. Because if it sits on your shoulders, it will tire you. Whereas if you, it's like taking it, it's not, don't leave it on your desktop open and draining battery. Don't leave that app on because you suddenly you'll look at your mobile phone and the battery will go because you've got all these apps on and they're draining you. Know it, don't ignore it, take it in, feel it. It's good to feel it because that motivates your actions, but then close the app and put it in a folder and you can go back in there and add solutions to it. Costa, thank you so much for, for joining us this time. I'm saying this just in case we drop out. So that would be a terrible shame to have not said thank you so much. Before. No worries. <laughs>